Dodge with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, prairies without interruption. But when the rails were laid to within a mile of the town of Rockford, things really began to happen. After the Indians had been driven off, the foreman of the work crew talked to the men. Men, that's the third time the Indians have attacked and torn up the rails. For some reason, they're determined we won't make that last mile into rock. I get to work, start laying those rails again. Meantime, I'm notifying the commanding officer at Fort Giles. 20 miles back along the railroad about these Indian raids. All right, let's get to work. Come on. A few days later at Fort Giles, the commanding officer, Major Bell, was talking to his captain at headquarters. Captain, the situation is a mighty ticklish one. We felt sure that the railroad's trouble with the Indians was over. I know, sir. Supply trains have gone to the end of the line with additional construction supplies. Neither the trains nor the supplies have been bothered. But the minute the men start working that last mile into Rockford, the Indians attack. Yes, beg pardon, sir. Now, what is it, sir? Hank Weaver, the Indian scout is here, sir. Then come right in. Yes, sir. Major will see you, Weaver. Howdy, Major. What do you have to report, Weaver? Big band of Indians under Chief Blackhawk. Late camp a couple of miles beyond Rockford. How many are there, do you know? Nigh on to a thousand or more braves, I'd uh, say. Have you any idea why they've become hostile after all this time? No telling what Indians will do, Major. Or why they do it. Of course, if you have a large enough garrison here to force you, Major. No, no, I've had orders to avoid open battle with the Indians. What's more, I have only a small garrison here, only 200 men. Only 200, eh? That's right. And I can't get reinforcements for at least a month. If open warfare starts and the Indians learn how few men are here... It's had a good chance of taking the fort and wiping us out. Yeah. 
Looks like that last mile of track into Rockford just ain't going to be laid for a long time to come, then. We'll have to fight them eventually, Major. If construction on the railroad is to continue... I hope not. I sent word to a public friend of mine asking him to get in touch with a certain man who might arrange a powwow with Chief Blackhawk and get the matter settled peaceably. I'm hoping that man will arrive here soon. He sure must be a right smart arm if he can do that. Who is he, Major? He's known as the Lone Ranger. Hey, I've heard of him. The Indians trust and respect him. I saw him in action once. He rode a magnificent white stallion and wore a black mask. He always traveled with an Indian companion. Must be a mighty interesting hombre. I assure you he is. Well, I hope he can do what you think he can. I'll ride back over to town. Keep you posted, Major. Very well, Weaver. I'll be back in a few days to make another report. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger arrived at the fort in response to the message Major Bell had sent to the Padre at the mission. The masked man and the Major lost no time in discussing the situation. I've never seen Chief Blackhawk, but I know him by reputation. What, uh, what have you heard about him? That he's clever and alert and quick to take advantage of a favorable situation. I see. He has great respect for superior forces. It's best that he doesn't learn of the small garrison you have here at the fort. I agree with you, sir. His uh, sudden interest in stopping construction on the railroad is strange. Yes, he expects me that way, too. And I intend to find out what's behind it. Uh, since you've never met Chief Blackhawk, won't it be rather risky going to his village wearing that mask? Oh, I realize there is a certain amount of risk, Major, but I have a suggestion to make, sir. Of course. You'll be acting on behalf of the Army. Why not go to see the Chief disguised as one of my officers? I could uh, let you have a uniform. Good suggestion, Major. I'll follow it. You may. I wish you every success with Chief Blackout, sir. Oh, thank you. If I'm successful in arranging a powwow, I'll let you know at once. Now, I'll go with you to get that uniform. We must do everything possible to settle the situation by peaceful means. Meantime, Hank Weaver, the scout, had gone to Rockford. He entered the cafe and approached a heavy set man who yeah. sat at a table in the corner. Well, Hank, eh? what time you got back? You made the trip as quick as it could, Jerry. Yes, how can I go? Found out plenty at the fort. What are they planning to do? Listen, Jerry. The major's scared of an open fight. Because he has orders to settle the situation peacefully. <laughs> yeah, they won't get any words with Chief Blackhawk as long as I'm paying them off with rifles. <laughs> so far, Chief Blackhawk has played along with it. Sure. As long as we can keep him doing just that, I'll be satisfied. If that railroad completed as far as Rockford, my wagon freight line won't be worth a nickel. But you can't hold it back for too long. I know. But it's held up another month. Some companies that have been holding off waiting for the railroad will sign new agreements with me to all this stuff. Look, have you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Well, sure, why? Well, the Major's having him come out here to try to fix things up with Black, with black folk. You think he can do it? That mask, Ambry, is known to have a way with the Indians. But if we manage to put him in wrong with Blackhawk and his braves, before the Lone Ranger can get to him... How do you plan on doing that, Hank? With the help of our renegade Indian friend from the chief village. Mago? Yeah, Mago. I'll meet him tonight and get him to lead a small hunting party of two, three Indians from the village. They'll go out in the hills in the morning. Well, then what? Let's go in the back room where we won't be overheard. Come on. I'll tell you all about it. After leaving the fort, the Lone Ranger rode to the outskirts of Rockford, where he met Toto. Then they rode into the hills beyond town and pitched camp for the night. The following morning, Toto started to town to get a few supplies. As he followed the trail toward Rockford, he suddenly ringed to a halt when he heard this shooting. Oh, hello, fella. Oh. Shoot and come from around bend and trail. From experience, Toto knew the value of caution. He glanced around quickly and noticing that a fairly deep arroyo ran along one side of the trail, he decided to ride into it and follow it around the bend to investigate. Get him up, Scout. Riding Scout, Toto advanced cautiously along the arroyo. The heavy brush along the edge of the arroyo hid him from view. A short distance ahead, he heard a voice call out. Come on, Let's go. Oh, Scout, oh, oh. Peering through the heavy brush, Toto saw three horsemen coming along the trail. 
He noticed that one of them was an Indian who had just caught up to the other two in answer to Hank's call. As the three of them passed along the trail close to him, Papa could hear what was being said. Uh, What did Mago go back there for, Hank? I don't know. Why'd you go back, Mago? Oh, oh. He gets this from police force. Looks like a medal of some kind. Uh, Yeah, that's right. I'm going to piece the raw eye. Police force wears silver charm round neck. Now me wear silver charm. What good is it? Brave who wear silver charm someday. The big chief. That legend of Christ. Hey, you get caught with that, you'll be in trouble. You better wear it under your tunic where it won't be seen. Uh, me do that. You better send Mago back to the Indian village with news, Hank. Yeah. Mago, uh, tell Chief Blackhawk you and the others were ambushed by a masked man on a big white horse who was with an Indian. The others were shot, but you got away. Uh, me tell him. Meet us in town early this afternoon. Now tell you something else you can tell the chief. Some news about the fort. Uh, now make all right to Indian village. Ah! <laughs> the Lone Ranger won't have a chance when he appears at the village after Mago tells that story. Well, let's get back to town. Get it going. They go find out what them do, and they go tell Lone Ranger. Get them up, scout. Tonto left the arroyo and rode a short distance up the trail. He saw three Indian ponies grazing off to one side, and the bodies of three Indians lying nearby. Tonto quickly stopped and dismounted. <laughs> Close inspection showed Tonto that two of the Indians were dead. When he knelt beside the third, Tonto discovered he was still alive. The wounded Indian opened his eyes as Tonto bent over him. Then, with a weak effort, grabbed a knife from his belt. You, you get away. No, wait, wait. You get put down there. You not kill three foot. You will knife. No, you not do that. Please stop. There. Now, me cut knife. Uh, it's not good. Three foot, son of great chief Black Horse, and die by hand of Potawatomi. Me. me not kill three foot. He throw knife away. Uh, you, you not kill. No, no. Me help you. You see men who do this? Uh... Me not see. Uh, it not matter. Me fix wound, and me get your pony. Take you back close to your village. You not be afraid. Me help, Fleetfoot. Uh, you help, Fleetfoot, not forget. Using his knowledge of first aid, Tonto bound the Indian's wounds, and helping him onto his pony, rode with Fleetfoot to the edge of the Indian village. Then, at breakneck speed, Tonto raced back to the Lone Ranger's camp, to tell what he had seen and heard. The Lone Ranger had already disguised his features and was preparing to put on the army jacket and cap the Major had given him. He was greatly concerned about the news. So the Indian Mago went to the Indian village to report that you and I were responsible for the ambush? Ah, Indian Fleetfoot, me help. Him, Black Hawk's son. Maybe Fleetfoot knows the truth. No, no, me ask Fleetfoot. Him not see who shoot at him. Chief will believe Mago. What do the two white men look like? Well, one dark, heavy set, other thin, rangy. Him have army saddle and bridle and army blanket. And maybe him army scout. I see. I know this is serious. I'll put my mask back on over this disguise and ride to the fort. Uh-huh. What you do at fort? I'll talk to Major Bell and try to find out about that army scout you mentioned. Our plans may have to be trained. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. As a horde of yelling savages moved in on all sides, the situation seemed hopeless. See the copy. Them not fired, is it? That means they've been told to take us alive. Isn't that not good? Them torture us, maybe. Tell them we give up. Maybe we'll be able to reason with our chief. All they can. All they can. Me, I'm done. You kill Hunter. Can I kill him, Fleetfoot? You hurt Fleetfoot plenty bad. Take us to your chief. Mago has spoken with a crooked tongue. Uh, Mago tells truth. Chief Blackhawk have revenge. Now we tie on horses. Take the chief. All right, let's go. Arriving at the Indian village, the Indians led their captives into a wigwam. Then after they were tied securely, they were left by themselves, except for the stalwart Indian brave who stood guard at the entrance. It was dusk when the Lone Ranger and Potter were led from the wigwam to the center of the village. They were tied to stakes facing a big bonfire, whose bright glow cast weird shadows over the painted savage faces around them. The Lone Ranger knew his mask would be taken off and was relieved that he had disguised his features just before their capture. Toto glanced at the calm, steady expression on the face of the Lone Ranger. Then Toto spoke. Here come Chief. He must have me. Maybe I can make him listen to reason. Chief Blackhawk. Come look on faces of those who came from ambush. The masked one shall be uncovered so women can better enjoy seeing suffering the claims will bring. Oh, wait, oh, great chief. Mago has spoken with the tongue of the serpent. It is masked one's word against Mago's. Mago is of our tribe. He did not lie. And even now, Fleetfoot, son of chief, comes to gaze on those who shot him down. If Fleetfoot came up, Harry, then bring him to look at us. Maybe him help now. Fleetfoot, come. Oh, chief, my father. Fleetfoot, he helped you today. Remember? Ah, what a water me, he friend. Him save Fleetfoot, him not kill. Oh, my tail. Uh, anyway. I know. Out of truth. What is cutting you, Toto? Fleetfoot, huh? Masked man, his friend. Him not shoot. It may go. And two other men. Tell them all. Alaseda. Nemo. Me no kill it. Fleetfoot say him give you your life. You friend to Indian. Other must die. No, no. Him friend. They won't take our word against one of their tribes. No, it's not good. Kimasabi. Yes. The charm. Maybe that's the proof. Charm. What do you mean? Wait, Kimasabi. Fleetfoot, huh? What a silver charm. Those who try to kill Fleetfoot take silver charm from neck. Charm around neck amigo. Me see him put it there, under tunic. Father water may now talk with Fort Tom. Oh, no, Chief, my father. Him friend. Him not talk Fleetfoot with Fort Tom. Bring Mago. Mago leave with many braves. Go to Fort. Mago say white chief at Fort. Get ready to battle Indians with many soldiers. That's not true. Why are they gone to the fort, Chief Blackhawk? They go tell Chief only a few soldiers at fort. Him go kill soldiers. Take fort now. Toto, take a silver bullet from my belt. Give it to the Chief. Ah. Ah. And we got bullets. All right, give it to him. A Chief Blackhawk. Here. You take No. You give silver bullets. Hurry up. It means you, mask one of silver bullets. That's right. I was coming from the white chief at the fort to talk peace with you. It is not good that braves from Black Hawk's village go on the war path against the Iron Horse. It is better that great chief keep the treaty of peace agreed upon some moons ago. White chief of fort wants to be friends. He asked for powwow with great chief Black Hawk. Mask one speak wisely and well. No time to lose. Chief Blackhawk, you must come to the fort with us. It take long. May go and braves there soon. If they wipe out the fort, the great white father will send many soldiers. Chief Blackhawk and all of his people will suffer. He must come at long ride. May go have big start. That's true, but uh... wait. There's a supply train on the track one mile out of Rockford. We'll ride that. We'll take our horses and get there as soon as May go. No. Chief Black Hawk, not ride Iron Horse. Iron Horse come to destroy all Indians. Mago has lied well. The Iron Horse will not bother the Indians. You, you're not afraid? Mm, 
Chief Black Hawk, bravest of men. I'm going to ride the iron horse. I'm not afraid. Will you come? Chief, do what mass one do. Hola, Jay Malaysia. Hola, Mabongo. You can call for horses. We tell them to get back our guns. Good. We must get to the fort and prevent that massacre. The railroad is our only hope. Accompanied by Chief Black Hawk and a few braves, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the point outside of town where the tracks ended. A railroad supply train stood with steam up, ready for its return run back past the fort for more supplies. The train crew stood with drawn guns. Oh, no, no, no. Because of his officer's disguise, the engineer and fireman listened as the Lone Ranger explained the situation and enlisted their help. The chief looked on with misgivings. When the time came, he went aboard with the others, and the train started. The Lone Ranger had persuaded Chief Black Hawk to ride in the engine cab with him. The chief watched closely and drew back when the fireman opened the glowing firebox to throw in more wood. The iron horse has now black fires on. <laughs> the fire in there makes the iron horse go. Pull up, farmer. The chief sat silently, grasping the edge of the window for support. He turned and looked down at the ground rushing past. A strange expression on his face. Once more he spoke. Chief, sit down. Do nothing. Yet move like big men. The iron horse carries us at great speed, chief. And when the engineer suddenly reached up and pulled the whistle cord, the chief sprang up as if to jump. Iron horse, help! You're pretty angry. <laughs> Easy, chief, Black Hawk. The iron horse isn't angry. It seeks to move livestock and people from its path, so that they may not be harmed. Ah, that's good. As the train moved along, the chief gradually relaxed. The look on his grave face changed from distrust to wonderment, from wonderment to pleasure. But the climax to his great adventure came when the Lone Ranger indicated that he could sit beside the engineer and place his hand on the throttle. He soon found that by a slight movement, he could decrease or increase the engine's speed. Finally, his usually set features cracked into a smile as the chief spoke. <laughs> Iron Horse, not master of Black Hawk. Iron Horse, do bidding of chief. That good. That he's good. <laughs> now you've found out that the Iron Horse is nothing to be feared, Chief Black Hawk. It is good for the West. It is good for your people. Mine. Uh, now, now we need him go faster. So the journey was made during which the Indian chief became fast friends with the Iron Horse. Chief Black Hawk was beaming with a smile of a conqueror. As with the help of the engineer, he applied the brakes and found the train coming to a stop. Iron Horse bring us quick to find Mago. Black Hawk punish Mago for evil talk and much fighting against Chief's good friend, Iron Horse. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the fort, Mago led his graves in a furious attack on the garrison. They didn't expect anything like this, Captain. We can't hold out against them, I'd like to know how they found out about how few troopers were garrisoned here. You suppose that last man was enough? Up. His plans must go to stay. We get a close to pull. What's the moment this side, men? Closing inside! And whatever comes, we'll get down fighting. Looks as though that's what's going to happen. Tribal talisman. Mago has son of serpents. Him kill his brothers. Him steal silver charm from Fleetfoot. Him go back to village to die. No. Me not go back to die. Me kill thief. Oh, you don't. You, you shoot bullet to not come a hawk from hand of Mago. You save life of Chief Blackhawk. Toto, we'll ride to the fort and take Mago with us. You tell us who the others are. All right, easy, steady. Come, Chief Blackhawk. Chief, ready? Come to the Later at the fort, after finding that Hank and Jerry had been taken into custody along with Mago, the Lone Ranger returned the officer's jacket and cap 
and put on his mask and white sombrero. After a powwow with the chief, the major spoke. Chief Blackheart, we have smoked the path of peace. Those who spoke of pork terms, the army scout and the stage owner, will be punished by our laws. Mago will be turned over to you for tribal punishment. That good. Him, enemy of Iron Horse. Well, now that you know, I'm sure you'll keep your brace for further attacks on the railroad. Iron Horse bring chief to port. Him, chief's friend. I don't think you'll have any more trouble, Major. Thanks to you, sir. It was the silver tribal talisman that convinced the chief we spoke the truth. Chief Blackhawk. Get new silver charm. A new one? Ah. Fleetfoot get back round silver charm to wear. Chief Blackhawk get charm that keep him brave, strong. It's silver charm that bring peace. Me plenty proud to keep silver bullet charm. I'm sure that silver bullet is a talisman the great chief may be proud of always. Thanks, Major. I'll send an escort with the chief to his village. Good. In that case, tell him I shall leave. Adios. Adios, Adios. Adios. We've been fortunate, Chief Blackhawk, to have such a man as an emissary to bring us together. Ah. Mask one have wisdom from great spirit. Him have strong muscle, stout heart from Thunder God of Indians. Him friend of White Chief at Fort, so me be friend of White Chief. Mask one say we have peace. Ah, that good. Me take braves from village. No longer will Indians fight the great iron horse. Well, uh, Chief Black Hawk has spoken. The chief speaks with words of wisdom. The silver bullet is a good medicine that has been given to you by the masked one. He is the Lone Ranger. George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.